I'm Roy Song. Welcome to the School of Violin Artistry. In this video, we start our study of the Concerto No. 23 by Viotti. Viotti was one of the great line of violinist composers, which means that his music brings out the singing quality of the violin and utilizes the possibilities of the bow. It also lies well under the fingers. Viotti was a composer of the classical period. He wrote it in the style of Mozart, Haydn, and early Beethoven. That means we need to play his music with elegance and clarity, and with purity of tone. It also means that there are a lot of subtleties of bowing style, which we need to attend to. In the opening measures, we establish quality with a beautiful, pure, resonant tone in the best register of the instrument. Start with the bow, about here, at the end of the winding. Gauging the speed of the bow, so you arrive smoothly at the extreme tip. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The whole notes should have just the tiniest bit of shape. The tone blossoms out and becomes a little richer in the middle of the note, and then it tapers off. It's very subtle. I wouldn't call it a crescendo. Make a graceful phrase ending with a full quarter note and just the tiniest bit of tapering off. This isn't really the end of the phrase, but nevertheless, it needs to be shaped with tender loving care. Now a quick retake so you have good control of the beginning of the next note. There should be absolutely no slide coming down to the G. Don't spoil it this way. You can leave the tiniest bit of space between the E and the G. The grace notes should be fast and light. the ways you establish classical style and elegance. Now I leave the bow at the tip to start the next phrase softly. Starting with no vibrato, then crescendo and diminuendo. goes along with what's happening in the piano. Give this bit an elegant articulation at the tip. Again, reasserting the classical style. If you don't do these stylistic things, this piece can be deadly dull. Make sure this measure is clean and rhythmically precise, making the transition into the next section with no awkwardness. Clean, resonant, fast, detaché, with no sawing. Don't overpress like this. Keep the resonance and give the phrase some shape. The second time it's piano. I like to let the bow spring just a little to add some sparkle. But not too much. The springing comes in and out. It's not the same for the whole passage. And I don't plan it out. I just let it happen. Again, I like to 
to leave the bow on the string and begin the next phrase at the tip, softly with no vibrato. Shaping the phrase. Now you need to find a good place in the bow for an elegant flying staccato. Observe the articulation, legato, and then a separation. In this passage, I like to use a shoeshine bowing, down up, down up, down up, down up. That's very elegant. And then at the end of the phrase, you can lengthen the notes. Be careful of the rhythm here. It's two sixteenths and an eighth. Don't let it become a triplet like this. But like this. This passage needs to sing. Yes, I know it's a difficult passage. You're climbing up into the high register and crossing over to the A string but it's a special musical moment. If you're just playing the notes, you're not doing your job. Keep the bow moving, keep the vibrato going. You can even broaden the tempo a little. In this next passage, the first finger is the anchor. All the other notes should lie comfortably under the fingers. The fourth finger moves between G and A. Keep the tone light. The instrument rings. The arpeggios of D major and A dominant seventh resonate with the open strings. But only if it's beautifully in tune. Take the time to tune this passage. Now we have a sequence, a repeated pattern going down the scale. You need to know, first of all, that this whole passage is within a D major scale. So you have half steps between F sharp and G, between C sharp and D, and again between F sharp and G. All the other steps are whole steps. Play up and down the scale on the E string. play the main notes from the passage, which are the first finger notes. That's 
the framework. The other notes fit in, like this. If you're having trouble with this passage, then treat it as an opportunity to build your musical literacy and your knowledge of the fingerboard. One useful exercise would be to play the passage an octave lower. Can you do that right off the bat? If not, you can write it out this way. Here's another good exercise. Musical instincts tell you where the half steps and the whole steps come. with a rather difficult fingering, which has a lot of uncomfortable string changes. I understand the reasoning behind this. It's to get violinistic color and contrast. But personally, I feel you can make it more interesting and more comfortable, like this. So, the second time, I'm playing it softer with a little bit of spiccato and adding some slurs. That's one possibility. There are lots more. By all means, experiment. You're allowed. And you're expected to. That's your prerogative as an artist. There's no obligation to use the Boeings that the editor put in. Another sequence, all within the same D major scale. And yet another sequence coming down the scale. a hard one for intonation and for tone quality. The piano hardly plays here. It feels kind of uncomfortable, naked. Just concentrate on purity. Purity of intonation and purity of tone quality. 